my name is Darren McGarvey and I am a, an author, a broadcaster and a, a musician. Um, that's brilliant, Darren. So, so tell us about these elements of your work um, and what you enjoy about them. You know, it must be so interesting in doing so many different roles. Yeah, well, they, they all kind of come out of a passion for writing um, and, and depending on what form you're writing for, whether it's newspaper or a book, or uh, a, a script for filming, then um, you, you have to modify what you're doing. So I enjoy the challenge of that and the different opportunities that come with doing different things. But I think it all comes from a, a kind of passion for writing about social issues, raising awareness of them, and just using as many tools as, as are available to me to try and uh, convey that message. Great, and you know, that it's, it's amazing where you've got to today, so tell us. How did the course you studied HND Practical Journalism at Glasgow Clyde? So tell us about how you decided to go on that course and how did the course help you to get you where you are today? In 2013, I had uh, just gotten sober after many years of, of, of uh, alcoholism and drug problems. And so going to college was a big step for me because this was my first kind of step back in from the kind of margins of, uh, you know, that, that sort of lifestyle. Um, so in that sense, that was really pivotal for me because then I had to confront a lot of the reasons why I found it difficult to mix. Um, so on a social level, it was a massive uh, growth experience. But then there were also all of the practical aspects of the course, which helped to demystify a lot of stuff for me. You know, I had big ideas about media, preconceptions about media, preconceptions about journalists. And actually, when I started to get more into it, then a lot of them were challenged in a way that was quite healthy for me, not just in terms of what they were about specifically, but about just having a bit more humility when you go into a situation, because it can be difficult when you're younger and you're idealistic and you've got big plans. Uh, but at the end of the day, what I realised was most journalists who are actually in the industry, they all have a passion about something. They all got into it for the right reasons and it's about finding the right uh, place for that within the profession. And what do you think is the, is, the, is the biggest thing that you can take, that you took from the course? Like, what did you learn? If you think back to that experience in these two years, what, what did you take from it? For me, it was the first time I had been given feedback on my writing. So, you know, I, I was publishing on blogs and I was performing and I was doing public speaking, but that's kind of one way traffic. It's me putting a message out there. So I hadn't really had the experience of taking an incoming call, as it were. And so this for me was really important because what I realized was when I'm getting feedback, it's coming from a good place that's going to improve the writing, but also that process of taking the feedback and dealing with whatever emotions it might bring up, uh, you know, to have your work criticized constructively. Um, actually, I came, I came to recognize that that wasn't just essential to improve as a writer, but that, that was uh, helping me become more emotionally mature and more resilient uh, as I moved into a profession where um, you're not just going to get feedback from your editor, <laughs> you're going to get <laughs> feedback from anybody in the world who wants to tweet you their opinion. Did that, um, did that experience then on the course of getting the feedback, did that help you um, launch your career ultimately? What the course did was it gave me confidence, um, not just confidence in my ability, because uh, I think most people kind of, they'll, they'll fluctuate between maybe being a bit grandiose one day and thinking what they're doing is really brilliant, and then in another day they'll be crippled with self-doubt, and I think that just becomes part of the process. But more, it was the confidence that while you're immersed in a piece of work, whatever it might be, large or small, there's a moment where it seems unmanageable, where there's too much going on, there are too many moving parts, and there's a kind of urge to throw in the towel and think that you can't do it. And that's when you reach out for support, that's when you ask for help, that's when you ask for advice. Because often, it's like a computer game, when you're playing a video game, you're really stuck at it for ages, you're really frustrated with it. But if you just turn it off and go away for an hour and come back to it, you often overcome the thing that you were stuck at and it's the same with this kind of work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that so it's all a learning process, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, what, would, 
what would you say you were um you were a bit older when you went back to education and you've spoken quite a yeah, lot yeah. about that in the past mm-hmm. what would you say to anybody who was thinking of going on to a course like this to the journalism course um it was somebody who was a bit older and wanting to have the confidence to return to education what would you advise them well first of all the, the journalism is uh, as more essential now than i think that it has ever been in an era where uh, social media and technology means that there are varying qualities of information out there and often it's just about gravitating towards whatever makes you feel good and in an era of pandemics and political dysfunction and all of these things we really need as close to the truth as we can possibly get as well as chains of accountability within journalism if wrong information does come out and whatever criticisms you have of newspapers or media generally that's there, you know. Um, so, so understanding that you have a role to play in that and feeling passionate and rising to that challenge, I think, is the first thing. And then the second thing is, uh, you know, while obviously now and again you're going to be having to write about things that necessarily you might not be first interested in at first, actually what it does is, even when you're not writing about the things that you're passionate about or working on things that you're passionate about, what it does is, it really adds to a bank of pre-existing knowledge. It's a bit like building contacts, except you're building a bank of knowledge about different concepts, about different ideas. You learn how to tie aspects of history to aspects of current affairs. You start to see things in a broader context. And so this adds a kind of richness to whatever you bring to your writing or journalism and however, whatever your kind of, how you make your values visible and your ethics visible. Brilliant, Darren. I'm sure that will help inspire a lot of people. Just lastly, the last thing I'll ask is just about the sort of element of coming back into education. And you've spoken before about what college offers. Mm-hmm. Um, in a more sort of general perspective, what would you say to somebody who was maybe in their, their late 20s, their 30s, or even yeah. older, and was trying to sort of build up the confidence to go back into college? What would what would you say about that? Well, I mean, the, it can be challenging. I remember how kind of odd it felt when I first sat in the classroom and then I realised that, that most of the people in the class were, you know, maybe five or six years younger than me. Um, but actually what I realised was I had a tremendous amount to learn from them um, in terms of, you know, their curiosity about things. Their ideas weren't quite as fixed as mine. And I think that, that that's actually quite healthy. Um, to be around people from different age groups and who have grown up in ultimately a different type of society. That's how quickly the pace of change is now. So, so there's that aspect of it. But then also, um, when you're when you're when you're sitting with yourself and you're you're kind of trying to analyse what is it about this that I find difficult, um, you have to separate out. Uh, is it is it a kind of ego thing? Are you just a bit embarrassed about going back and being a bit older? Uh, or do you have issues that you have to address that are to do with anxiety, that are to do with social skills? Because once you can sit down and be able to separate out what, what the problems are that you can fix yourself and what you need support with, then it means that all of the help that's available to you, and the help that's available to you is quite considerable if you make use of it. Uh, it means that that'll be more targeted, that'll be more effective, and, 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 and you'll be supported. Hi Danny, thanks so much for coming today. Hi, I'm Danny Gibson, digital media producer at The Drum. I've been working there for around three and a half years and a quick summary of it, I produce video, audio content online for thedrum.com, which includes award shows, panels and all that that we're doing right now online. So it must be an exciting job, Danny. What do you like best about it? I like the fast pacedness of it. You, you may not think of it like that in a magazine, but we have so much content going out all the time. We produce so much video. We have festivals um, about four or five times of the year. And right now we're in the middle of our DT Fest, which is a week long um, festival of content um, that we're producing to go online. And we've also, I'm also currently producing our award show to uh, finish that festival off. So it's um, very fast paced and it's quite it, it's, it's intense but it's very it's a good intense sounds brilliant so tell us how you got there so you studied the hnd practical journalism at glasgow Tide. so tell us about that course and how did the course help you to get where you are today 
So, um, I think it was back in 2017. Yeah, 2017, um, when I applied for the course. Um, and it was only one I applied for just because I knew it was accredited by the NCTJ. And that was something that um, really piqued my interest because I knew from studying media before it, um, I couldn't quite get into journalism the way I wanted to. Um, so how that's helped me get to where I am today is um, I think from all the lecturers and all the classes, it was just a good mix and doing the work experience. So my work experience, one of them, I think I did about six weeks worth, <laughs> Um, one of them was with the drum and I just found it so interesting. It was a different side of journalism because it's B2B. Um, not something I would have thought to have gone into before, but it was um, it was a really good week. And um, they were interested in bringing me back as well. So how that all turned out, you know, I ended up getting a job um, in the final weeks of my second year. That's brilliant. So what would you, what advice would you give to anyone who's thinking about applying to study journalism at Glasgow Clyde? Um, I'd say you really need to, you really need to put your all into it. You know, it's going to be an intense two years. It really is. Um, but don't let that, you know, scare you off. <laughs> if you really want to do journalism, like if you're really into your writing and you really want to just if you really want to develop your craft and your writing there, you know, it's it's the best option to do. You, you know, I know everyone says, you know, oh, but you can maybe get a job just by working your way up in a, in a newspaper or something like that. But the course really just helps you fine tune these like little things that will get you noticed more. Plus, it's essentially once you're in that course, you're a journalist. As much as people say, oh, say you're a student journalist, you're not, you're a journalist just really put yourself out there and just get your head down and get on with it really. And then you're the editor weren't you of the of the magazine that you produced in, in your second year? First year. Yeah um, first year the Clyde Insider yeah. So yeah um, I did various roles in that and did the editor position and then in the second year um, yeah, I, I think I stepped down a little bit there just and didn't decide to go for it because I really wanted to focus on my second year because it gets really heavy then. Not that I'm saying like, you know, people shouldn't um, go for it, but just for me personally, I wanted to kind of more focus on getting through the, the, the remainder of the course. But um, the, the Clyde Outside was a really good one as well, though. I mean, that was a really good team effort. And then we ended up winning the, the student, Scottish student, journalism awards for it so that was quite you know satisfying at the end of all that and you get into the workplace it's it is about teamwork as much as you write your own pieces and that your editorial team you all need to work together to come out with the best content whether that's even if you're not an editor you know obviously you're going to start at the bottom when you go into the workplace it just really allows you to understand you know take ideas from other people pitch ideas and you know it just gives that kind of good team building skill really and it, oh, yeah. it allows you to sympathize with others and understand other people's ways of thinking great well that has been so helpful Danny thanks so much and thanks for talking to us thank you okay.